Welcome to the Palace Theater here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, we're here in South Carolina, five days before the first Democratic primary in the South, and it's no coincidence that we're holding this debate on the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, along with our partners, the Congressional Black Caucus Institute. The state will provide the first significant test of support within the African-American community in an historic Democratic contest that has confronted issues of race and transcended them. As you can see, the candidates are not yet on the stage. The traveling press pool, though, is here awaiting their arrival and what will be a big photo opportunity. We thought we'd bring you that as well tonight. So let's get started and welcome the presidential candidates. Joining us now, first, Senator John Edwards. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Senator Barack Obama. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. And Senator Hillary Clinton. Nice to see you. Glad to see you. We're going to begin, begin this debate momentarily. I want to bring in uh, Suzanne Malvo and Joe Johns. They're here as well. They'll be joining me in the questioning tonight. Suzanne, as we get ready for this debate, uh, let's take a look at some of the issues that are likely to come up. I know we've been preparing a long time for these questions. Give our viewers out in the United States and around the world a sense of the kind of substantive issues we really want to talk about. Well, sure, Wolf. Obviously, the economy is going to be uh, one of the top issues. There are a lot of people in this audience, uh, in, in this state, as well as around the country, uh, who are really suffering. And uh, you talk about unemployment, you talk about the market. A lot of people are really afraid of what is happening here, and they want to see some real solutions. And that's what they're going to be looking for from these candidates tonight. There's some housekeeping going on behind me, even as we await the start of this debate. Uh, Joe Johns, you've been thinking about this night for a long time. It's a very special night for all of us. Give us a little flavor of what you've been focusing in uh, as we get ready for this debate. Well, I think Suzanne is right. The first thing you have to talk about is the United States economy. Please In a state like South Carolina, roads, which has so many military bases, you have to look as well at the issues Carolina, of Iraq and Afghanistan, what these candidates have said about that. Uh, there are myriad other issues, certainly the social issues uh, play into it, the religion of the candidates, their beliefs, um, how they feel about religion, and how they articulate that as well. Certainly a, a key consideration here. Also personality, so important. I talked to a University of South Carolina professor last week who said that in South Carolina when you get to the primaries you always look at the personalities of the individuals who are running for president because the people in this state really want to know who's on the ballot. So all of that plays into it. Uh, South Carolina is a wonderful place because it's so early in the primary process, Will. And as they begin to escort the uh, traveling photo, uh, the press corps out uh, here, the photo opportunity is uh, about to wind up. Suzanne, just remind all of our viewers out there, this is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., his birthday. It's a national holiday here in the United States, and it, it, it's certainly the fact that we are meeting on this day will impact some of uh, the questions and presumably the answers we'll be getting. Well, Wolf, right. do you want me to jump in there? Well, I guess no. Suzanne wasn't hearing that question, but that's all right, Suzanne. Hold your thought, because we're going to be uh, moving on uh, as the uh, press, uh, the photo, shot, photo opportunity begins to move out.
All right, let's begin uh, some housekeeping before we move on to the questions. Uh, we have some specifics that we want to go through. On behalf of all of us, first of all, I'd like to thank our partners, the Congressional Black Caucus Institute, and our hosts, the Palace Theater here uh, in Myrtle Beach, the city of Myrtle Beach, and the people of this state for welcoming all of us here. We don't want the uh, candidates uh, necessarily to have to use up their valuable time thanking everyone themselves, so I just did on behalf of all of us. Over the next uh, couple of hours, my colleagues Suzanne Malvo and Joe Johns and I will be doing the questioning. Uh, we're more or less on the honor system over the next two hours here in Myrtle Beach. No loud bells, no flashing lights. You're not going to see any of that. The candidates all know they have about a minute, a minute and a half or so to respond to some opening questions uh, uh, and then uh, if they lose track or whatever I'll try to gently remind everyone that some of the answers might be even less than a minute if possible or a minute and a half but we're, you know what we're not going to be all that sp uh, specific we want to spend the next six or seven minutes uh, following up on the opening question and try to get a real conversation going on some of the very important issues of the day there are a few other rules other than this the candidates must stay on the topic of the original question if they stray uh, at least stray too much and try to answer another question or move on to another t topic I'll try to remind them immediately that those are the ground rules all of which have been worked out with the uh, campaigns uh, another candidate or question they can certainly respond and certainly if someone is criticizing another candidate the person who's being criticized will have a, a an opportunity to respond uh, as well after a brief intermission about midway through this uh, through this debate the format will become even more more conversational. Uh, we'll have no time limits during the second hour, really n no rules more or less. We're just going to talk about the key issues facing our country. Tonight's a debate, I want to stress to everyone, is about the issues. And one of the uh, three senators may very well end up as the next president of the United States. Uh, so it's important that we focus in on substantive issues. We want to find out what kind of president that person would be. This is a good opportunity to get, get a better sense of what's going on. All right, that's enough for me. So let's begin with our questioning. And our fir first question goes to uh, Joe Johns. Joe? Senator Clinton, good evening. The number one issue for Americans of both parties is the economy, and today the news is simply not good. Markets around the world are in a tailspin because of fears of a U.S. recession. So far this year, the Dow has lost nearly 9%. How much money would your stimulus plan put in the pockets of the average South Carolinian? Well, Joe, I'm glad you started with the economy because that is the number one issue. What's been happening in the markets, what's been happening with the home mortgage crisis, $100 a barrel oil, so many of the issues that are really at the kitchen tables of Americans today and what they're talking to me about. We have to stimulate the economy. I began calling for some kind of economic action plan back at the beginning of December. I have a package of $110 billion. Uh, 70 of that would go toward dealing with the mortgage crisis, which unfortunately I don't think that uh, President Bush has really taken seriously enough. I would have a moratorium on home foreclosures for 90 days to try to help families work it out so that they don't lose their homes. We're in danger of seeing millions of Americans uh, become basically, you know, homeless and losing the American dream. I want to have a, an interest rate freeze for five years because these adjustable rate mortgages, if they keep going up, the problem will just get compounded and we need more transparency in the market. Then I think we need to give people about 600 and $50 if they qualify, which will be millions of people, to help pay their energy bills this winter. You know, there are so many people on fixed incomes and working people who are not going to be able to afford the spike in energy costs. We need to make sure that we start jump-starting the jobs in this country again. That's why I want to put money into clean energy jobs, green collar jobs, and also make sure we have a fund that will help communities deal with the consequences of the home foreclosure crisis and make sure the unemployment uh, system is up to the task. And then we will have money for rebates, but let's make them the right rebates. Everything we know about President Bush's plans would leave 50 to 70 million Americans out because a lot of our seniors on fixed